doesn't happen to me. <laughs> but I'm sure it's happened to a lot of people. And then when they get their license, you know, a year or two later, they're gone, you know, they'll go somewhere else. But, um, that's the way it goes. But I've got a couple of them that'll come back and help me if I get my fine, you know. What kind of praying did they have to get a license? I'm sorry. What kind of training do you have to go through? Oh, uh, you, you have to work for 12, 12 months, and then today it's different. Even well, when we bought the ferry, they, they changed a lot of the rules and regulations in '86 from what they had been the same for like 75 or 100 years. Then all of a sudden, they, you know, changed everything. But today it takes three years actually to get your license. <coughs> But it takes 12 months to get your first stage, and then you work for another two years before you get your permanent license. How many people does it take to crew a boat besides two? It? two. Captain and a deckhand. One deckhand? Right. Okay. You have to be 16, <coughs> 16 to work. Any other questions? What time do you close in the evening? 9.30. Okay. We make the last trip at 9.30. 9.30. Is that weekends too? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's uh, May through October. Okay. And then November through April is 8 o'clock. Okay. How many cars do you take over today? It varies. Uh, <coughs> probably average around 600. Per day? Yeah, on average. <coughs> a lot of trips. Probably. Yeah, we make about 140 trips a day. Yeah. Or more, Sunday. Are there certain times a day you go down to one boat? Uh, yeah, through the middle of the day. Uh, we run. We try to run two until 9 a.m., and then we run one from uh, uh, 9 until maybe 3 in the afternoon. On Friday, we've been running two boats from 12 noon to 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But we're busy. It seems like we're busier on Friday afternoons. But that's one of the advantages of having. There's a picture here of the three boats that we have. And uh, used to be we just, when I started working there in 61, we had the one boat, the old new number seven. That was the only boat we had. And they, back then, you only had a couple bridges to compete with. And people would line up. We'd have 50 and 60 cars lined up waiting for one boat. You know, you, you wouldn't have that today. They wouldn't. <laughs> Even they if wouldn't, you can't get on to the Brent Spence Bridge? Huh? Even if you can't get on to the Brent Spence Bridge? Well, now, shore? yeah, they have closed the Brent Spence Bridge down, you know, 75. They have closed that down, and we line up then. Of course, there's no alternative. But uh, today we have three boats, which is really an advantage because then if you do have to take one, like to Louisville, to take it out of the water and do some work on it, you still have two boats that you have there, you know, where it used to be if one of them, I remember when I first started working there, if something went wrong, or one time we was going across the river and we hit a submerged on a Sunday afternoon, we hit a submerged log and it broke about four buckets out of the paddle wheel. And we had to spend like four hours repairing the wheel because we only had one boat. And if something would break down, you'd have to spend maybe all night working on it to get it back in the service. But now we can just, you know, work it into our maintenance schedule or whatever. Any other questions? Are the uh, engines in the uh, boats, uh, are they gasoline or no, diesel? No, they're diesel. diesel. Uh, boot number seven, I, there's lots of things I didn't tell you. You can just click with the questions, but <laughs> I didn't want to bore you. <laughs> but boot number seven, uh, I had said it was the first uh, steel ferry boat that they built, Cotton Mars had built. And back then in 37, it was also unusual to have an all welded steel hull, and that's what this was. Uh, most of the boats at that time, if they were steel, they were riveted or something, you know. Mm -hmm. But this was an all weld made out of blower steel, and it, it was a good hull. And we still use the boat today, but we have replaced the hull since then. But uh, what I was going to say was, this, uh, uh, boot number seven, when it was originally built, was steam powered, still had the steam boiler in it. And they ran it that way for 10 years. And then in 47, they converted it to diesel electric. And that's what it is today. Put a Cummins engine in it. When it was, when it was uh, steam powered, did they fire it with uh, oil? No, they used a coal and wood. Did they? Yeah. The 
Delta Queen now and some of the uh, other steamboats of today, they use a, it's a real thick grade uh, black crude oil type stuff, okay. like molasses. Mm -hmm. But that, I didn't, I don't remember that because I was born that year, so that was <laughs> the well, diesel okay. wind, it was noisy, but they say it was real quiet, you know, and real, it was real pleasant, you know, as opposed to the engine we have today, which is noisy. <laughs> <laughs> You have to shout to talk to somebody. Paul, did you ever hear what that gun number seven cost when it was built? No. <coughs> I don't I don't really know. What did you guesstimate? You want me to guesstimate? <laughs> Probably about twenty-five thousand or so. Mm -hmm. or maybe a little more. At that far that's a good figure. Maybe thirty. Mm -hmm. They did do a lot of the work themselves on the boot number seven when they built it. They had it was wooden aprons and uh, and uh, of course the powder wheels they built Ollie Kotmar and Henry uh, as we do today too. We 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 fabricate our own parts for the powder wheel out of white oak and assemble. They usually last about three years on average. Uh, today they might last a little longer because we don't run that boat all the time. Back then they ran that boat continuously. So, so when you had a, uh, chunks of ice in the water, that's the worst thing on a wooden paddle wheel. Because it'll crack the buckets and splinter them. But uh, white oak is about the best you can do against that. Feel free to look at the photos. And uh, there's a book here that uh, has a lot of newspaper mm -hmm. articles dating all the way back to the Civil War. And uh, if you think of any other questions, just ask me. I'll be around a while. Thank you. Friday, August 6th. It's a Friday evening. It's going to be the uh, annual Dinsmore uh, Homestead Gala. And I will tell you that um, it's going to be really special this year because it's going to be at the home of R.C. Durr on Richwood Road. R.C. and Deborah Jo have been gracious enough to invite us to have the gala at their home. We'll have picnic on the lawn with uh, fried chicken and barbecue. Um, there, just watch for announcements in the paper, but put it on your calendar now because you won't want to miss it. It's going to be a really special uh, treat to be at the Durr's um, home. Uh, they have race horses. Uh, he owns a lot of coal mines and whatnot. So, and their home is just magnificent. So we will and we'll have live music and everything. You won't want to miss that. So watch your the uh, recorder for more information on it or give me a call. So, just 
just wanted to make that announcement. Thank, Thank you. you, Betsy. Well, with that, we will adjourn and we will remind you that we have refreshments out in the lobby, so feel free to look at the pictures and get you something to drink and a cookie and hope to see you the next time. Thank you very much.